This door looks like uh, the portrait of Dorian Gray. You can just see the paint sloughing off. It looks like all three paint strippers that um, testing um, have have worked pretty well. The uh, the top part here is the Piranha Four made by Fiberlock. The center is the uh, Citrus Formula paint stripper made by American Building Restoration, and the bottom is the Multi Strip Advanced made by the Sunnyside Corporation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a putty knife and some steel wool and a wire brush and remove the paint. Uh, I'm predicting that this is going to need two, uh, two applications of all the paint strippers, but we'll see. These are the tools I'm going to be using to remove the paint. I'm using uh, a medium coarse number two steel wool pad and just a basic putty knife and a wire brush and this wire brush has a little bristle some bristles at the tip which are going to be kind of neat for removing the paint at these corners let's see how the piranha 4 did wow that is amazing. Down to bare wood. Holy mackerel. This is one application and it is just coming off really easy. Quite impressive. So this, this is a 70 year old door. This is one application of the Piranha 4 made by Fiberlock and I am really impressed. This is amazing folks. Okay. Now unfortunately this, this product comes in five gallon containers as far as I know only so this this product would be uh, really good if you are removing paint from multiple doors uh, then you'd need a, a large but this is uh, this is coming off almost effortless There's just a little bit of stubborn paint here and this is less than 24 hours. If I had waited perhaps another few hours, maybe this, this stubborn stuff would come off. But I'll tell you what, if I get just a little bit more stripper on here, this is probably going to come off within an hour. Really beautiful wood, huh? This uh, this chemical is uh, this this formula is really impressing me. Now with these with these hinges, I'm going to take these hinges off and before these uh, these screw heads I couldn't get a screwdriver into them but I'm just going to dig out the the paint in these uh, in these screws and I'm going to remove the the hinges and I'll give them another dose of paint stripper and I'll put them back on. All right. 
my putty knife isn't going to do real well in in these uh, in this molded molding area, so I'm just going to use my wire brush to remove the paint here. And I want to do it lightly. I don't want to be digging into this door, creating gouges in this molding. So I want the chemical to do the work for me. I don't want to have to physically dig in with a putty knife or a wire brush and kind of mar the surface. I want the chemical to do the, the heavy work. And I am lightly going over this molding with the wire brush and it is coming off really easily. Just a few stragglers here here and there that uh, I'm going to have to go over with uh, another application of the paint stripper but uh, it's going to come off really quite easily. All right, I got the majority of paint off. I'm going to go over it with some steel wool now. I'm lightly going over this door with my putty knife. Still some stubborn paint on this door, but like I said, it's going to come off with the second coat very quickly. Look at that beautiful wood. That hasn't seen daylight since for 70 years. Okay, Prana 4, thumbs up. <laughs> Good job. Uh, now, we're going to work on the lower section here. This is... American Building Restoration, the Citrus Strip paste, <clears throat> Paint Remover Paste. Uh, I, I just did the center of the door with this product. Let's see how it worked. Well, I can tell right off the bat that this is completely thumbs up. Amazing. Look at that. Hello, door hardware. Wow. These guys really know what they're doing with this paint stripper. Now, this was the product that I had to trowel on. I did not use a paint roller. I like being able to use a paint roller. It's just easier to apply, especially if you're stripping multiple... And like the Piranha, this, this is not coming off 100%. It is going, there's just some stubborn areas and it's just going to need a second coat of paint stripper. But it's going to come off very easily. Look at that beautiful wood. Now this isn't going to take a whole lot of time. I'm removing this old paint very quickly. One thing you want to be cognizant of is that a lot of this this paint that's uh, it's been rewetted and it's kind of like fresh paint in a way. This will collect on your shoes, and if you're not aware, you'll leave your work area and you will track paint all over your carpet or your floors so you just want to you want to get up this this old paint residue and put it dispose of it <coughs> try to keep your your workstation clean so let's see what this door hardware looks like Uh, 
that's really pretty. Now, I could probably just work at this with the steel wool and just get it down to bare wood. It's going to be easier for me to just apply a little bit of the stripper in this area and take it off with a putty knife. So that's that's what I'm going to do. All right. Special attention not to dig into this molding. Let the stripper do the work for you. This is almost coming off 100% out of the molding. So, the Prana 4 and the uh, citrus formula are completely uh, paint strippers that I would endorse. And you can see for yourself how well they're working. I would say that both of them are working at the same pace. There are some stubborn areas still, but uh, like I said, they're, they're going to come off uh, fairly readily once we apply the second coat of paint stripper. All right. The bottom is the multi-strip advanced. So let's see how it performed compared to the other two. Okay. It's working also very well. This is our this is our second coat that I spot primed on this door. I'm gonna let it dwell for uh, maybe half a day, four hours, something like that. Um, I want to mention something that happened last night. Uh, I had these three different kinds of paint stripper on this door, and it got kind of fumey upstairs. So if you're using the the fiber lock product. Uh, you can you can actually or or the other ones are all of these I think um, what you can do is you can get some masking film this stuff right here the same the same product that I used to put underneath the project to keep my floor clean you can use this and this will actually help slow down the evaporation rate and it will contain the fumes so if you're worried about the smell in your house this is not going to hurt anything you can actually I'm just unfolding this to demonstrate you can actually use this to contain the fumes slow down the evaporation rate and the uh, solvent in the paint stripper is going to be prolonged longer because it's slowing down the evaporation rate. So you can wrap this both in the front and the back of the door if you want. I'm using a chisel to get some of the paint out from the, uh, the molding areas here. And I think that when you're working with paint strippers that you're going to just get better and better at determining how much to use and what kind of tools that you're going to need to remove the paint. This is just coming off really quite easily. 
All right, folks. I got the uh, I got the hardware off the door, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just paint it on the uh, the hardware. This is the doorknob. I'm going to make sure it's coated well with the paint stripper. In this case, I'm using our our Piranha number four. Put the lid on. And uh, I'm just going to coat the, the hardware with a paintbrush here and put it in a Ziploc bag and let it marinate, kind of like what you'd do with a piece of pork or something like that. So there's the doorknob. Here's the cover. I'm just going to goop it up with some paint stripper and let it soak for a day, a day and a half, something like that and the paint I bet you will just come right off and then I'll clean it up with some soap and water and when the door is painted I'll just reinstall the, uh, the hardware uh, I've gotten off the door anyway I, I want to clean them and so I've also got a paintbrush that's that's hardened and this is a nice purdy brush. I don't want to throw it away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a heavy duty degreaser and I've used this product for removing uh, oxidation off garage doors before we paint. It does a really good job. It's got a pH of 12.5. It's very caustic and it will do a great job cleaning up my tools. You do not want to use this product with fine paint brushes that uh, have like hogs hair. You will destroy them. So you, uh, you can only use this product to clean something that has a synthetic bristle. But as far as cleaning paint off stainless steel um, or, or uh, titanium or something like that, uh, this product is just fine. So this will clean up my paintbrush and get my tools nice and clean for the little bit of remaining paint that I need to uh, move the door. All right, I've had this hardware soaking in the paint stripper, the Prana 4, for uh, about a day. So I think it's about ready to clean. And I'm just using some water and some mild detergent. And I'm not using a wire brush. I don't want to scratch this metal with a wire brush. So I'm just using an old toothbrush to clean it up. And as you can see, it's cleaning up quite nicely. As you can see, with uh, with removing the paint from the door, our paper's done a good job protecting the floor, but it's kind of dirty. So what I'm going to do is just tear it up and put some new paper down, uh, clean the door up, and get it ready to paint. Our floor is now protected again, and it's a, a nice, clean surface to work on. I don't have to worry about traipsing through wet paint chips. So it is now time to clean the door. All right, I'm cleaning up this door. I'm using number two steel wool and some soapy water that I added a little dollop of the degreaser to. I've got my wire brush, and this is a stiff nylon bristle brush, and it does a really good job cleaning up the molding. The molding's the hardest part, getting the old paint off. It can. Uh, it can just gather in that molding and it's kind of difficult to remove so I'm just getting the majority of paint off with this nylon bristle brush and then once I get 90% of the paint off with this I'm going to lightly go over it with my wire brush get this nice and ready to paint so this is just soapy water that I'm using 
and once I get all the paint off this, all the residue off this, clean up this door, I'm going to rinse it off with some fresh water. We'll be ready to repair and uh, sand, fill, scratches, holes, whatever, and get it ready to paint. Wipe the residue up with a sponge. Okay, got a little stubborn area right here. Get rid of that with my putty knife. We're going to fill some of the holes. There's some holes here and there that uh, this door has suffered from over the years. And we're going to fill those up. We're going to sand it a little bit. And we're going to finally paint this door. It up. All right, the store's starting to look really pretty. Okay, we've got a little repair up here. Looked like uh, something got knocked off in the top of this door. We've got some shallow areas up here that we're going to want to fill. And we've got some rough spots on the corner, corners right down here, and a little divot down there. So uh, we're going to use the glazing compound for the shallow fills. And on the corners right here, we're going to use the epoxy wood. But I'm going to mix up some quick dry epoxy first as a primer for these areas on the corners, and then we'll apply our sculpt wood. I'm using this quick setting epoxy I got from Ace Hardware. It dries in 10 minutes, and I'm going to use this as a primer on the areas of the doors where uh, we've got some, um, some repairs to make and I like using the sculpt wood on the corners because all the other fillers are somewhat vulnerable. They'll dry soft and the repairs just won't last. Once I have my epoxy in the cup, I'm going to mix it up thoroughly. And I usually go a good two minutes. You don't want to go spend too much time because this stuff dries in 10 minutes. But, uh, you're going to want to mix this thoroughly. If the epoxy is not mixed correctly, it doesn't cure properly, and then you're just making a huge mess and a waste of time. Okay, I'm going to be applying the epoxy to the areas that I'm going to be putting the sculpt wood on. See how that corner is uh, missing some wood there? Here we have a repair at the bottom of the door that uh, we've got some wood missing. This is going to be a good candidate for the sculpt wood. If your repair is larger, then by all means use a larger paintbrush. Okay, our epoxy primer is dry and I'm ready to apply the sculpt wood. <clears throat> We're going to put equal amounts of the sculpt wood out. Okay. You're going to want a 50 50 mix of this. Once you get the equal parts out, measured out of this sculpt wood, again, you're going to want to knead it. I just wait for it to get a little moist and for the color to get consistent. You can see we got some stripes going on in there, so we're going to need. 
need to need a little bit more. Okay. It's starting to get a little moist. Okay, we've got consistent color and it feels kind of sticky and moist at the moment, so I think it's ready to go. So what we did is we we used an epoxy glue to prime the areas that we're going to repair. And what I like to do is I like to get a little bit of this sculpt wood and kind of push it into the repair areas like this. And then kind of smear it and that way it really gets mixed in and uh, it gets a good adhesion to the repair area. Okay, just like that. So now we're going to build up that corner. I want to build that corner up. And I'm just going to shape it. All of this is going to get sanded down. There we go. Just You see how I'm getting that ridge built up there? A little excess doesn't hurt. Just like that. And uh, this this is really properly named sculpt wood because you can really sculpt it quite easily. Okay. Now we got a little edge right here that's uh, in need of a little TLC. using my thumbs together, sliding it down the door, and kind of rebuilding that edge. And when this stuff dries, it's very sandable, and you can get a nice radius back on this door. Okay, we've got a little scratch right along here in the rail of this door, and that would be a really good candidate for the glazing compound. And we're just going to fill these little crack areas. Again, these these are the types of things that these kind of repairs with these little cracks are difficult to get spackle to stay in because they, the spackle just seems to sand out. So these little minor imperfections, scratches, you're going to want to use the glazing compound. Got a little scratch in the bottom right here. I'm going to fill that. I'm paying very close attention that I'm not getting it in the bottom ledge of this molding because it makes it very difficult to sand out. So I'm just going around looking at this door for the little imperfections. I don't really see any big pitting in this door. Um, again, you can use vinyl spackling if it's in the field of the repair, like in these paneled areas, if there is a big gouge, you could use vinyl spackling compound. But uh, this door is in fairly good shape for its age, and I'm thinking that we're going to get away with the sculpt wood and the glazing compound. All right, so this is the clamp and you put the inner tube in either end and if you have a big like splinter repair on the side of your door. This is a really good way to keep the splinter compressed while the wood glue is drying. And what you do is you just squeeze in the splinter like that, let go of the clamp, and it will hold fast until the glue is dry. And then you remove it and fill, sand, and you're done.
Okay, I've got a drill bit that is the same diameter as our wooden dowel. We're going to drill out the hole that won't hold the screw anymore. Okay, we've got our hole drilled. We're going to put in our wooden dowel. I'm going to mark it where I'm going to cut it. And if you have a multi-tool of some kind, you can always just glue the dowel in and let the glue dry and then cut it later. But if you don't, you can always measure it, cut it, and uh, <coughs> glue it and fill it. Okay, I'm just using ordinary wood glue to repair this hole that was too big for it to uh, hold a wood screw. So we're installing a wooden dowel and it'll be new wood. We're going to tap it in there. Okay. okay, we've got our new wood dowel installed and when this is dry and we're ready to rehang the door, we're going to tap this little hole and we'll put on our new wood screw and it'll hold like brand new. It is time to sand down the sculpt wood and I, uh, I built up the corners pretty well and so to save time I'm going to be using this wood rasp just to knock off the bulk of the sculpt wood and then once I get it down to uh, a manageable um, uh, level I'll be using a sanding sponge and uh, I'll do that but you can use an orbital sander I'm just you I'm doing it by hand because I'm in my basement and I don't want to get dust everywhere so it's gonna take me a little bit longer but if you're outdoors or you have a vacuum attachment that uh, uh, you can connect to your orbital sander by all means you can do that too so here we go. This uh, sculpt wood is really easy to manage. And I'll have this leveled in no time whatsoever. The goal is I want to get it level, the sculpt wood level with this plane right here and, and uh, also the uh, the styles of the door and once I get it down to pretty much the same level I'm going to put away the wood rasp and go with the sanding sponge. Notice I've kind of got this rasp at a little bit of an angle. And I'm not pushing down real hard. I don't want to gouge the sculpt wood or the door. Okay, we're getting close. We're going to have a nice corner once this is all sanded. Remember how much that radius was kind of sunken in? It's going to be nice and flat once it's done with it. Okay, I think that's good. I think I'm going to do the rest by hand. I'm, I've got down to the wood grain here. Okay, that looks good to me. The rest we can do by hand. I got this big glob at the bottom right here and we're gonna shave that down completely. We don't need that there. The rest we can just do with the sanding sponge. So you might notice that this is not a hard edge. It's got a little bit of uh, a rounded radius to it and with a few swipes of the sanding sponge just on the corner doesn't take much you can if you have a hard edge you can certainly knock it down quickly with the sanding sponge
this is our glazing compound. It has dried nicely. Very easy to sand out. It sands out beautifully. What I want to mention also is that you can prep these doors to your specifications. If you want to get a Steinway finish on these doors, by all means, fill, sand, uh, you know, and, and again, there's some little imperfections here and there, but for me, this is going to be completely adequate to paint. I'm going to be happy with it. Uh, there are just a few little minor dings and stuff, but I can live with those. Uh, but again, it's, it, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you want to keep working at it and get that piano Steinway finish, uh, by all means, you can do that. But uh, everyone has their different idea of the, what kind of quality they want to they wanna have at the end of the... What I want to do is I want to clean up. I want to get rid of all of this debris from the sanding. And uh, I'm going to use a vacuum and this little chip brush. And then I'm going to go over the whole thing with a little damp rag and get it ready for painting. These little wire brushes do a real good job loosening debris in the corners. And then with the vacuum you can just get rid of that. Of our prep work and we've vacuumed off all the sanding debris and I'm just going to go over this whole door lightly with a with a very damp sponge to make sure that we get up 100% of the dust and if you would like you can change your water after you do one side of the door change your water make sure it's clean Get the molding, the styles, get the rails of the door. The cleaner your door is, the better the paint adhesion will be. So what we're going to do is we're going to, after we're done getting all of the sanding dust and debris off this door. We're going to be going over this entire door with a primer followed by two coats of paint. 